Yeah, today we are looking at single machine scheduling. Hello, everyone. My name is Mike Awole. Um, Let's go. The first thing we're going to be talking about are some of the few uh, introductions that we need to see. Um, this is a single machine on which several jobs are waiting to be processed. In this case of um, single machine scheduling, jobs, several jobs are coming in. But then these jobs will be processed by the machine depending on the specification, depending on what the, the, the operator specified for the job to be, uh, to be, which jobs to be attended to first. Should it be the first one or the last one that, you know, arrives at the machine? We're going to see some of the key major um, scheduling rules as we go along that will guide the way the machine will process the jobs. Now, some definitions, key definitions. Average completion time is the time, is the average time required to complete each job in the group. And then the average number of jobs is obtained by dividing the submission of completion times of all jobs by the completion time of the last job. In this case, this is not like the average number of jobs. This is average, uh, you know, um, uh, this is talking about uh, submission of the uh, completion times divided by the completion time of the last job, not the submission of the entire job. And then the tidiness is the job that is completed after the due date. Uh, ordinarily, you were supposed to submit a job today and then you submit two days after. That means the, the lag, the tardy, the, 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 the tardy at that point in time is two days. Average tardiness of all jobs, therefore, is the submission of all tardiness divided by the number of jobs, including jobs with no tardiness. So that is what that is saying. The average tardiness of all jobs is given by the submission of all the tardiness, submission of all the tardiness in terms of the number of days, weeks, depending on the, on the units given in the table. So this will then be divided by the number of jobs, including jobs that do not have tardiness. Then the number of tardy jobs, this is the count of all the numbers of jobs that are tardy. Count as an head count of the number of jobs that are, that are tardy, that are noted to have, you know, uh, to have submitted late, if I may use that word. Now, straight away, three scheduling rules that I want to consider. First come, first serve, which means as you, we serve you as you arrive at the machine, which means jobs are processed in the order they arrive at the machine. There is no cheating. In this kind of instances, more or less like the queue in the bank or the queue wherever you find yourself uh, in any system. And then we have the SPT, which is referred to as the shortest processing time. This means the job that requires the minimum processing time is first processed. Shortest processing time. Each job will be, you know, if you, we're going to have a sample at the end of this, of this now, we're going to see it, work some key examples, which means if you are given the opportunity or the instruction to use the SPT, the shortest processing time, the one that has the shortest processing time is the one that we'll consider first, followed by the next shortest processing time, and so and so forth. Now, the EDD is the earliest due date, which refers to the job that has the smallest due date. The job with the smallest due date in this instance is processed first, and then other jobs will follow along. Now, let's look at this example. We're going to use this first come first serve rule. Like I said, the job that arrive at the machine first will be processed first. So this is the question here, here now. This is the question here now. Uh, so what we have to do now is job A is 17, present time is 17, 17 days or 17 minutes, depending on what you have. And then the due date here is 25, is 45. So the job, the second job here is 12, and the due date here, the corresponding due date here is 35. So now you now have to formulate another table, emanating from here, emanating from the table the, on the left. So now the, the priority is given to uh, the processing time, you know, in that space, that same order which we have been given. So there's no change here. So the only thing is uh, completion time is accumulating, is calculated by accumulating the processing time. So uh, you look at the first job here, job A is processed, the processing time is 17 minutes, and the due date is given at 45, which is still fine. So the completion time is 17 uh, days. Now the due date was given as 45, but then the official manager submitted at 17 days, which is still fair enough, it's fine. The submission came before the due date. So that means there's no tardiness, zero tardiness. The second job, uh, processing time 12 days, and the due date is 35. So when you cumulate 17 and 12, you have 29. That's the completion time for this job was 29. But then we were given due date to be 35, which means the submission was before the due date. That means it passed the test of tardiness. No tardiness as well, zero tardiness in the system. And then you move on again to the next one, uh, job C. Job C, the present time is 22, and the due date is given as 27. 
then don't forget the completion time now for the third job, which is job C, will be the cumulative of that. So you're going to have 22 with the previous one. All of these will give us 51, which means the job was completed a bit late. It was supposed to have submitted by 27 after the 27th day, but then the job was only ready on the 51st day. So you're going to minus 27 from 51 to calculate the number of days. Eight. Yes, the number of days by the job was delayed. So if you look at that, this is going to be 51 minus 27. Give it up 24. Same thing goes for the next job. And so on and so forth until you get to the last one. So the question now is, what is the average completion time? The average completion time from the definition that we have done previously is given as the summation of this, which is summation of the completion time divided by the number of jobs. The number of jobs is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's jobs A, B, C, D, E. Five jobs. So it's going to be the average of the total, the summation of the completion time, which is 261, divided by 5. That will give a uh, lead with 52.2. The next one is average number of jobs in the system. The number of average, the average number of jobs in the system is given by the summation of the completion time. Then don't forget, the summation of the completion time, which is 261, 261 divided by the completion time for the last job. In this case, it is not the number of jobs, it's the completion time of the last job from the definition of the average number of jobs. So in that instance, we now have 2.75. The next question here is average tardiness. What is the average tardiness? Average tardiness is the summation of the total tardiness, which is given as 37, divided by the number of jobs, including jobs that do not have tardiness, including zero tardiness. So that's what leads us with 17.4. 17.4. And then the number of tardy jobs, if you look at that, we have one, two, three, it's given as uh, three tardy jobs. So the next one now, it's um, shortest processing time. That's the rule. We want to use the shortest processing time rule. Same question on the left, top left here. But then we're going to give priority to their processing time. But in this case, the processing time with the shortest processing time will be given priority. And if you look at this, the shortest processing time here is 12 followed by 17, followed by 18, and so and so forth. So in that instance, we are going to consider job, job B first. And that is why the arrangement is coming here. We are going to consider job B first. That is why the arrangement is coming here first. So in that instance, as we consider job B first, the next one now is job A, following the shortest processing time. The next one now will be 18, which is job D. If you look at that arrangement, you have to rearrange. And then the next one now is job um, uh, job C. Job C, job C, which is 22. Then followed by the last one, job E, 26. That's why you have to arrange that. So once you arrange the job, you now bring the corresponding pressing time as well, alongside heat as well, including the due date as well, bringing them from the original table given. Now, the completion time now is not the thing we have to do now, which is usually the, the cumulative of the processing time. So, in this, in this instance, the first completion time for job B, the first job that was processed, is 12. And then the second job process was 17. And then the completion time is the cumulative of 12 and 17, which will give us 29. You do the same for the next job, which is you add 18 to 29, which will give us 47, and so on and so forth. So, now let's begin to answer the questions. Average completion time in this instance now will now be um, 252 divided by the total number of jobs, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 252 divided by, by 5 will give us uh, 50.4. And then the average number of jobs in the system is given by the summation of the completion time divided by the last job, divided by the completion time of the last job, which is 252 divided by 95. That will give us 2.65. And then the average tardiness, the average tardiness is just the summation of all the tardy jobs, including zero tardy jobs, divided by the number of jobs. Tardy, I mean, yeah, the number of the, the, the number of jobs. So we have um, the summation here is 90 divided by five jobs, which gives us 18. There's a maximum tardiness. Maximum tardiness, it's, uh, if you look at this table, the maximum between 42, between 0, 42 and 48. It's very obvious that 48 is the, is the maximum tardiness. So in that instance now, the, the job with the, with the maximum tardiness is given as C, depending on how the question is um, phrased. And then the last one here is the number of tardy jobs. Number of tardy jobs, it's, uh, if you count this, is two. This is one, this is two. So these are the two tardy jobs. 
Now, the last one which you want to consider is EDD, which is the expected due dates. Expected due dates, expected due dates. Uh, that's fine. So you have to arrange, you have to rearrange the order of the jobs based on their due date. The earliest due date will come first. So if you look at this due date here, what you have to do, you consider the due date here, uh, all the due dates here. So you have to look at the minimum, the minimum due dates here. The minimum here starts with 27. And then the corresponding job here is C, meaning that job C is coming for, so you rearrange. The next one here, which is next to 27, it's, um, it's, it's very obvious, 35, which means the job now that will be next after C is job B. If you look at the next one after that, oh, 45. You can see here. So 45 and the corresponding job for that is A. So you rearrange in that way. And you have to make sure that the processing time goes along with them as well. So the processing time for job C is given as um as 22. For job B, 12. For job A, 17. And you do that as well. You write, you just copy it and then or put it there. Now, the completion time is what we have to calculate. Like I said, it is a cumulative of the processing time. So if you look at the first one here, for the, for the first job, which is C, the completion time is 22. Now, the next job is the, the addition of 22 with 12, which is the 12 days here, which will give us 34. And the next one, which is the completion time for job A, job A, it is 17, it will take 17 days to complete that job. But then, don't forget it is cumulative, because all of that jobs will have been processed for a given number of days before job A in this instance. So job C will have been processed for 22 days, job B will have been processed for 34 days, and now job A to be processed now, we don't have 17, so that will give us 51. And that is the way all of that will be calculated. Same thing now goes for the tardiness. We look at this now, the completion time. The completion time here, it's... Um, 279 divided by 95. Now, average tardiness. Average tardiness now is the summation of all the tardy jobs, which is 77, divided by the number of jobs, including jobs with zero tardiness, will give us 15.4. And then the maximum tardiness, if you consider this, we have this tardiness 0, tardiness 6, tardiness 30, and first one, which one is the maximum? The maximum, obviously, is 241. So the, the, the maximum tardiness here now is 41. But then if you ask for the job with the maximum tardiness, that will give us D. And then the number of tardy jobs there, uh, if you calculate it, we have 6, 6 here, 30 here, 41 here, giving us as simple as that and that is what we just achieved a very quick recap i was looking at the single machine scheduling and we talked about some of the introduction about the average completion time where we have the definition of times and thereafter we talked about the three scheduling rules which is the first comfort serves uh, shorter processing time and expected uh earliest due date rather and then we now you know we experimented and we'll look at some of the examples here for each of them and we have been able to achieve our purpose for today thank you cheers bye